Igor, stop playing around with those eyeballs and come and give me a hand. <sighs> no, you fool, that is not what I meant. Ah, greetings and welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews. It is always good to meet new donors. I mean, to make new friends, something which I am always trying to do, provided I can find enough body parts. I am your host, the great Dr. Victor von Frankenstein, and today I have dug up this little gem for you from my collection. I've created a monster was released in 1988 by Gibson's Games and then brought back from the dead 19 years later in 2000 by Fundex with brand new artwork. Fundex then reanimated it again in 2003 once again with new artwork and a rather superfluous lunchbox carrying case. The box art features Igor the Mad Doctor and his monster, all rendered in a very simple cartoony line art style. Frankly, I am not a big fan of card games and had half a mind to pass on this one. However, given the theming, it was for me really a no-brainer to get this. Having played it a couple of times now, it really has made me change my mind about card games and even my wife is nuts and bolts about it. I've created a monster is a very simple game and unlike my creation, there is no assembly required. So let us pull up a stool and get Igor to scare up a villager for us to take a closer look. We have a whole lot of cards here and these range from action cards to parts of bodies and there's lots and lots of different varieties in here. The cards are obviously they are smaller than standard playing card size and you can see that they are quite thin and flimsy. These are over 30 years old and they have not held up the best in that time. A lot of them are okay, but some of them, particularly these ones, are really, really showing their age and have not been looked after well at all. We have the Mad Doctor card here, and if you get this, then that means that you get to pick another two cards and play two cards instead of just one. We've got various Igor cards, and these allow you to steal body parts from other players. You can take the left arm, the right arm, the left leg, the right leg, the head, or the body, depending on which card you've got. And these are really, really useful cards. This is where this game actually comes into its own and becomes good fun because you can use these really really tactically in order to thwart other players undermine their chances of building their monster and to help you build your own monster because you can use these not just to take the pieces that you need but to eliminate pieces from other players when you think they are getting too close as well as cards telling you which specific body parts you can steal, there are also two wild cards. And if you get one of these, then you can steal any body part at all from another player. We have this little plastic card holder. And this is a nice addition, but it's really, really flimsy plastic. And mine has not held up well at all and is cracked in a number of places that I will need to repair. And to be honest, it doesn't really add anything and it actually makes it harder to get cards out of here. So when I'm playing, we actually tend to not use this. It's not really any added benefit. This is essentially just a card game, but they've given us bases and I really, really like that they've given us bases. They didn't have to give us bases. You could have played this card game on any flat surface, but they've gone for bases and I think it just adds that extra little element. These are your laboratory that you're going to be building your monster on and each one has got different colored stickers in order to differentiate the different players. 
The bases are made of a quite a thin vac formed plastic here. It's really not very thick. And considering that this game is 30 years old or more, well, 31 just now, then it has started to unfortunately split in places at the seams. But given that this has been in storage for 30 years, they've held up really well. Overall, it's actually quite a sturdy base considering it's just vac form plastic because it's got so many straight lines and sharp angles on it. So as you play in the game you build up your monster on the base here this is your laboratory table. The legs go in the bottom here. We've got spaces for both the arms. The body goes at a slight slant here and the head goes in here. And you can build up your monster however you want when you're playing this game. You do not have to have matching pieces. There are, however, a number of body parts to make whole matching monsters. You could build this guy with his sharp spiked metal claw hands and his giant bear trap metal mouth and some rather natty orange braces and a lovely groovy tie there and is this a garter on his arm points wise this guy is the leader because each of his parts is worth 200 or you could build this purple waiter kind of monster with his manacles his hook hand and his uh, rather natty bunny slippers here and each of his parts is worth 100 points or we have this rather athletic looking cyclops here with his mismatched alien hands and feet his parts are worth 75 points. Or we have this werewolf in this rather fetching puppy yums crop top who's got lots of bones that he's eating and unfortunately he's got himself trapped in some kind of bear trap. His pieces are worth 50 points each. And finally we have what is probably the most traditional looking Frankenstein's monster with his sewn up forehead where his brain's been put in and the bolts in his neck. He's sporting a very natty looking football or rugby top and his body parts are worth 25 points each. So to play this game each player selects a different colour of laboratory game board. Three cards are dealt to each player and the rest of the cards go somewhere face down on the table. The first player takes their cards and looks at them in secret without letting anybody else see them. They then choose one card from the top of the pile and then they play a card. Well, let's go. This one's the highest value. Actually, the head's also worth 200, but I'm going to play that one. This player over here, they are then going to look at their cards in secret. They are going to take a card and then they're going to decide what to play. Well, Let's play the Mad Doctor, which means I get to draw two cards and then play two cards. So I'm going to put down the body and I'm going to put down the arm. This player here is going to select one card. Oh, they've got a Mad Doctor, so they're going to select two more. And then they're going to play to now this wild card tactically is really good so I'm going to try and keep this one to the end I could play it right now and take either of these two things which I do need at this moment but this one I find is best kept right to the end so that you when you only need one specific body part rather than trying to wait for that one to come up you just keep this to the end and then you steal that from the other player so i need to play two cards well let's put down that card there and let's put down a head as well this player they are going to choose oh there we go another mad doctor so they're going to choose oh and another one they're going to draw two cards oh they've also got a wild card which is a really good card i'm going to play another mad doctor choose another two cards one two 
And then we have to play three of these cards. So let's see, we can play that one there. We can play, mm, could play either of these heads, but because I'm being a nasty person, I'm going to play this head and this card instead to take their head just so they've got less pieces. And then I need to play one more. Well, none of these are any good to me. I could play this to get a leg, but I'm not gonna play that yet. I'm gonna save that to the end. So I'm going to just get rid of that head there. This player here, they are going to choose a card. Oh, they've got take a leg, but there's no legs. So we're gonna save that one. And I'm going to play this arm instead. Back to this person, they're going to choose one. Oh, they've got a leg, so they're going to play that leg. And now, on their next turn, they could play the wild card to steal the other leg in order to win. Let's see if that actually happens. This player here has got a leg, well, that's no good. I can see though, this person has only needs one more. So because I know they only need one more, I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen. I'm gonna play that one there and steal this leg, even though I don't need it, and then get rid of it, just so that they are not going to win. This person here could play the wild card, but now they're missing that other limb which they had. So they draw one. I'm not gonna play that just now. Um, so don't need any of these. Let's just get rid of that just now. This player here is going to draw one. They've got a head, oh, which they do need. Saving that to the end. Oh, they've also got, no, that's not. Oh, that was an arm. They've also got that, so they're going to play that. This player here, is going to go, oh, they've got take a head. Mm, none of those are of use, but I'm going to play take a head just to take this one and then get rid of it just to annoy this player. This player here is going to get a leg. That's no good, that's no good, that's no good. Saving that one. So actually I'm going to swap over this leg because this leg has got a higher point value. This player here, it's got a body. Oh, that's no good, that's no good. Could do that, but saving that. Um, let's just get rid of that head. This player here, it's got an arm. Again, no good to me. Most of these are no good to me. This arm is worth slightly more, so I'm going to Swap that out, play that arm. This player has got a leg, which they need. So let's put down a leg. And this player is now one away from winning, which they have that wild card. So let me see. This player has got a leg. That's no good to me. That's no good to me. That's no good to me. So I could discard them, but because I know this player is one away, I was trying to save that to the end, but I know that this player is one away, so I'm going to play that now, just so that they cannot win. I don't know that they've got a wild card, but I do know that they're one away. So I'm gonna do that just to thwart them. This person though has got two bodies, so that was actually a bad choice by this player. They can put a body there, oh, even though they didn't take a card. Oh, it would have been another body anyway although actually i should have played this body because it's got a higher point value but i didn't think about that back to this player here they're going to play this they can't play anything to steal anything so and none of these are any use to them can i swap out anything for a higher value one yes i can swap that out for a higher value and then it's back to this player here who only needs this leg they don't get that leg, but they have got oops, this wild card. This wild card could be played to steal this leg from this player. 
And this player now has got a whole monster and they have won the game. Playing that way, of course, means that you do not use any of the point systems. It's just the first person to get a complete monster. The other way that you can play is in rounds. So once the first person completes a monster, that is the end of the round. At that point, everybody totals up the points for each of their body parts and writes them down. And then at the end of three rounds, we look at who's got the most points. So you can play it that way as well with body parts worth points and who's got the most points, or you can play it just who gets their monster completed first. I've created a monster is at its heart, a pick and play card game where you are trying to find cards to build a complete set. However, Unlike Tummy Egg, which I have reviewed previously on this channel, you have a lot more control over the outcome given your hand of four cards and the addition of Igor and Mad Doctor cards adds a lot more player interaction and strategy. For example, I have found that it can be a good idea to keep a spare card of a body part which you have already played onto your operating table, but which you know that your opponent still needs, just in case they try to steal it and then you have a backup. Blindly selecting cards adds a random element that you have no control over, so this game can last anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes depending on which cards you pull and how you play them. It can be frustrating having your body parts stolen almost constantly. But do not come apart at the seams, it is all a part of the fun. If your head is screwed on right, you might just be able to steal them back and it can have you in stitches. If you love monsters, you will get a charge out of this game. It's just what the doctor ordered. I didn't like card games before, but this one has stolen my heart and I'm Igor to play it again. This original is not easy to find, but if you can, it's a recommendation from me. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.